Today, I want to share with you a scripture, and the scripture is the theme from VBS. Hebrews 12.2. Someone say Hebrews 12.2. It's what we read all week long. We're still in the series around the VBS theme, which is ready, set, and move. You heard the song like three times, so you know, you know how it goes. But I'll give you a little context before we read the scripture, and I ask you to stand in just a moment. This was a scripture, it's a, it's a letter that was written to a people, and these people were Jews that re- recently had been converted to Christianity. Jesus had just raised to life, and now people were converting to Christianity, and here's what was happening. They were experiencing persecution. Why? Because they were Jews. Everything that they did was in a community of Jews. And so their their economic structure was cut away from them. Who they sold to, who they were connected to, their relationships, they were cut off from the people that they knew. And here's what they were experiencing, problems in life. Anyone in here ever experienced a problem in life before? So I think this scripture can apply to you and it can apply to me because we're all gonna go through problems in life. We're all gonna experience heartache. We're all going to experience relationships being taken from us, things that are going wrong in our life. So this is going to be a good scripture and a message for us today. Would you stand to your feet as we honor the reading of God's word today? Thank you. I'll count us down and then we'll all read the scripture together. Three, two, one. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started this faith of faith, and he is the one who completes the journey of faith. Another translation puts it this way. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. See this verb, looking unto Jesus, it means two things. It means one, that we look to Jesus, but there's a second meaning. It means that we look away from everything else. I want you to catch this for a moment. Looking away from everything else. Maybe you've walked into this room today and you're struggling at home. Things at home feel like a lot right now. They feel overwhelming, they feel overbearing. There's a lot of things that you've gotta figure out with your kids and school and all the different things that are going on. Here's my message for you, what this verse says, look to Jesus. Maybe for you, your finances, you're struggling and you don't know how you're gonna make ends meet and you don't know what to do and you feel overwhelmed, you feel anxious because you don't have enough money. Look to Jesus. Maybe you're struggling in your marriage and you're not sure how to figure it out and you're not sure what to do, where to go, what's going on. Look to Jesus. Every fear, every worry, every anxious thought, can be pushed aside when we truly look and fix our focus on Jesus. Why? Because he's the answer. He's the answer, church. We don't need to wait to get to the end of the sermon to find out that Jesus is the answer. He's the answer for you. He's the answer for me. He's the answer for my city. He's the answer for your home. He's the answer for your problem. And today, here's my hope, that you wouldn't come in and just do church and play church, that you would truly experience the living God. He is living He breathes, his word is alive. It says that he is Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah who is here right now and he wants to be your answer. He wants to be your solution. But here's the deal, you've got to let him in to your heart today. Are you ready? Come on, let's just welcome the Holy Spirit. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit today. Father, we welcome you in this place. We welcome you in this place. Jesus, I pray that I would get out of the way Father, I pray that you would do what only you can do, Jesus. I pray that my words would decrease and that your words would increase. God, I pray that you would speak to hurting hearts today. God, I pray that you would help me. God, I pray that people wouldn't walk out saying, man, what a great sermon, but they'd walk out saying, what a great God. Lord, we honor you today. We pray for Pastor Jared that you would bring healing to his neck muscles. Lord, help him to get back to where he's 100%. Lord, we thank you today that you're moving, that you're alive, that you want to bring the answer to those that need it. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Everybody said?
Amen. You may take a seat. You may take a seat. Turn to your neighbor and say, man, I'm glad that I'm sitting next to you today. Hey, would you turn to your second choice and tell them, I'm glad, I'm glad God put you right next to me. It's always awkward, that little turnover. Sorry, you're my second choice. <laughs> what we learn from this passage in Hebrews is a simple idea that we all have a journey of faith. Every one of us. We all have a journey of faith. And here's the reality. This journey of faith, it's not up to anyone else but you. It's not up to your mom, teenager, young adult, your, your parents force you to come to church. It's not up to your wife, husbands. It's up to you. We are the only ones responsible for me. We're the only ones responsible for my faith. If your faith is lacking, if you're struggling in your relationship with God, you're the only one that can fix it, right? Today, I want you to understand that it's a journey of faith that we are called to work out. Philippians 2.12 says this, we're to work out our own salvation, catch that, work out our own salvation with fear and with trembling. So it's our job. And so today, as you take this journey of faith, wherever you're at, maybe you're just starting your journey, maybe you haven't made a journey yet, maybe you've been on this journey of faith for several years. Today, I wanna give you some tools that can help you in your journey of faith as you move through life. So here's the first idea, if you're taking notes, wanna, all those joining us online, I want you to type this in the chat. Here's point number one. Let Jesus help you design it. Say, let Jesus help you design it. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. The Bible says in this scripture, it says in another translation, he is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the author. I wanna talk about that for a moment, author. Anyone in here like to read books? Yeah? Only like a couple people, that's okay. <laughs> I like a good book, okay? I like that at the end of a book, this is my favorite, if you get to end a book and there's like a crazy like twist, and you get to the end, you're like, that's crazy. That's like the craziest ending to a story ever. My dad, when I was 14, had been telling me for years about this book. It's his favorite book. And when he got to the end of the book, he got there and he read this like, twist at the end and he remembers sitting up like in his bed in the middle of the night it was like 12 a.m or whatever he sits up and is like no way <laughs> and so obviously I'm like I gotta read this book so I'm reading this book I'm getting near the end and I'm like my dad was hyping this book up way too much like this book doesn't have like a cool ending you know it doesn't have the ending I was looking for but then I get to the part <laughs> and then I sit up in my bed and I'm like no way because it was awesome. Do you know that you have somebody that's designed you and who's created you and he is the author of your faith? And he wants you to get to the end of your life, to go through each day the things that he's prepared for you, the things that happen in your life, to sit up in your bed and go, no way, that's awesome, God. For your family, when they see God step into your financial situation and bring the breakthrough that you've been praying for and believing for and the restoration in your relationships because you're trusting God with it, for them to sit up in their bed and look at their wife or spouse and say, no way. Why? Because God is an author of your faith and he wants to write a good story. And in fact, he's written a good story for you. He's a good author. In fact, the book that he wrote is the most it's the number one most sold book of all time. The Bible. You might have heard of it. 66 different books. 40 different authors. Three languages. 1,200 miles of geography. Over 4,000 years. That's a pretty cool book. He wrote that book. But can I tell you, that's not the only book that he wrote. There is a story of your life that he is wanting to use and fulfill for you. And we've got to partner with that story that he has for our life. You see, he's designed a good life for you. 
but we settle for our own human standards. If Jesus has written a story for us and he's the author of our faith, then what is that story? What is the story? And how do we understand it? I'm thinking about a scripture, 1 Corinthians 2.9 that says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. Your mind, it hasn't even conceived the things that God has for those that love him. There are things in your life that you haven't even experienced yet that are so good for you that God has for you. There are people in your life, friends, that you haven't even met yet that are gonna be such a fulfillment for you in your life to be there with you during good moments and bad moments that you haven't even met yet. There are places that you're going to go. There are things. What's that Dr. Seuss book? Oh, the places you'll go. God has things for you, but you haven't even conceived them yet because his ways are much greater. I think about sushi at a time like this. I grew up in a household that didn't really value sushi <laughs> the way that it deserved to be valued. And so I, I didn't have much sushi. And so when people asked me if I like sushi, I'd say no, because I've never really had good sushi. And I started dating a girl, and she's Asian. And her family loves Asian food. So we start talking about sushi, and she asked me, I'm like, well, I've, I've never had it. I'm not going to say I don't like it, because she clearly likes it, so I'm going to say I've just never had it. It's more ignorance than anything, right? So then she starts to take me out to get sushi. And I'm like, ah, sushi's okay. Sushi's fine. <clears throat> but then there was one night. That sushi, sushi story. I believe it's over at Copper Hill. Everything changed for me. <laughs> and I had a spicy yellowtail with some little white rice underneath a little slice of jalapeno, sriracha, yes please, yes please, maybe a little lime juice. And I realized I couldn't even conceive how much I would love sushi, but I'll tell you this, what is my favorite food of all time? Leilani, sushi. That's all I have tonight or today, I'll see you guys later. Sushi, I love sushi, now here's the deal, before I had sushi, I thought the best thing that I could have was the chicken tenders from Chick-fil-A with the frosty lemonade. <laughs> now that is good, but it's not as good as sushi, okay? What am I trying to say? This has nothing to do with sushi, it's just an analogy. Here's what I'm trying to say, there are things that God has for you that you haven't even conceived yet. But sometimes if we're not careful, our mindset, we can be limited. That's why we have to allow God in to design what he wants to design because his plans are greater. His ways, they're higher, and he understands greater than we do. So here's point number two. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Point number two for those online. Are you forcing it? Are you forcing it? When it comes to the plans of God, here's why it's hard. Because we have our own plans and we have our own desires. And the hard part truly, if we're being honest, and I'm being honest too, it's hard to let him into that because we hold to it so tightly. We hold to it. It's hard to let God into our dreams and our desires and the things that we believe for for our life because we're afraid God will take it away or we're afraid it won't happen. But there is a scripture that I think is really, really powerful for us if we're gonna understand God's ways and how he thinks and how he's different than us. It's Psalm, Psalms 37.4. I want them to put this on the screen today. When I used to read this scripture, I'll be honest, I had a very immature view of it. And I'll, I'll, just, I'll just share with you my immature view if that's cool. Is that cool? So when I used to read this scripture, delight yourself also in the Lord. So serve God, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. See, the way I used to read this is I thought if I pursued Jesus enough, if I went to church enough, 
if I prayed hard enough, if I prayed long enough, if I read my Bible consistently and did the Bible plan, then because I did those things, God would have to fulfill the prayer requests that I have in the dreams of my heart. But then I realized that's not the case. Because what the scripture is really saying, if we're to see it the way I believe God wants us to see it, is that when we delight ourselves in the Lord, here's what happens. When we pursue Jesus, the world around us doesn't change and bend to what we pray for. What changes is our heart. Someone say, ooh. Our heart changes. We become more mature spiritually. And so what we start to pray for is no longer, well, I need all of this stuff. It's more, God, give me contentment to live with the things you've given me now so that I can be faithful and grateful for what you've given me. So I pursue Jesus. Then what happens? My heart changes. And then when my heart changes, my desires change. And I begin to pray different prayers. And I become, I stop being selfish with my prayers that I pray. And I start to think about his people and what he's called me to and about being, what the Bible says about being grateful and all the things that I see in scripture. And then here's what happens. The prayers that are no longer more human-based but God-based and holy, then God begins to fulfill those. Then God begins to fulfill those desires. Why? Why? because they're his desires. They're not my desires. Now let me pause, Tanner. What about God's desires though? Like I get that, that I should do that, but like I've been dreaming for this thing for a long time. Can I tell you that if he gives you a desire, it's not gonna be less than. It's not gonna be less than. In fact, that thing that you're gonna begin to pray for is gonna be so fulfilling, it's gonna be way more fulfilling than the original prayer that you had before, why? Because that prayer is human-based, and at the end, you'll still be feeling empty, you'll still be feeling lost, and you'll be praying for more things, why? Because it wasn't the thing that's supposed to satisfy you. But God knows the thing that you're actually supposed to pray for, the desires that should be in your heart, will fulfill you, will be the things that fill you up. The reality is God is looking for us to be people who pray his will. But here's what happens. Here's the problem. We come up with the prayer request. We come up with something and we ask God to bless it rather than getting in the middle of what God is already blessing. Isaiah 55, eight through nine says this. We can put it up on the screen. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. Nothing like when I think about that, I think about me and my father. I look nothing like my dad. Nothing. If you see my dad, we look, we look nowhere similar. Okay, so let, let's put this in context. Your thoughts, your thoughts are like Pastor Tanner. His thoughts, that's like Pastor Jared. They just don't, they don't look the same, just to give you context. Okay, so they're completely different. We have to recognize that his ways are higher. I love what uh, Ephesians 3.20 says, God can do exceedingly abundantly above what we could ask, think, dream, or imagine. He can do above that. His thoughts, they're higher. His ways, they're higher. But we get limited in our thinking and our human understanding, and we try to figure it out on our, on our own, but it won't satisfy us. I think about when I was in college, I was getting ready to um, get married and, and propose, and your boy had to make money. Any man ever been there? I had to make money, you gotta get money. So I tried to figure out what can I do to make some extra money so I can, I can save up for a ring and do all the things that I need to do. So I was like, ooh, what should I do? You know what I saw? I saw YouTube advertisements. I saw YouTube advertisements tell me you can make like a million dollars in one day. <laughs> you, I'm sure you've seen them. I'm sure you've seen them. And here's why, because it used to be a kid's like number one goal for when they're older is to be like an astronaut. Now it's to be an influencer. So I'm just warning you, you're gonna get all these weird ideas of like things that you can do because there's some influencer guy who's promoting some whatever. So you know what I was gonna do? I was gonna create an e-commerce store to sell yoga mats. 
You guys can laugh. It's, it's, it's <laughs> yoga mats. That's what I was going to do. So I did it. I started working on the, the website and all the different stuff. And then I, I created an LLC. Just all the steps. I'll just be honest with you. I, I'm not a guy who sells yoga mats, okay? That's like, <laughs> that's not my gifting, okay? Like, I, I can't even sell something on Facebook Marketplace. Like, I don't even, and it's so easy. <laughs> like, it, uh, just a funny story, a little tangent. I was trying to sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace for my garage to get rid of it because we were cleaning it out. And um, my, my father-in-law comes over and he's like, why don't you just sell it on Facebook Marketplace? I'm like, I have tried. I've tried so hard. He's like, are you serious? And so he literally sold it within an hour. Someone came to our house, picked it up. <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah, I couldn't even do it. I can't sell anything. You know what else I tried? Real estate photography. That's just a random one. Just kind of sh- I'm just kind of being honest here. And don't judge me as much, okay? You guys are judging me way too much. Real estate photography. Bought a lens, did all this stuff. None of those things bore fruit. Why? Because they weren't God's design for my life. And I can't tell you how many young adults and people I talk to, oh, I'm just going to go into real estate. Are you going into real estate because God's called you or because it's an easy way to make money? Oh, I'm just going to go to this college. Are you going to that college instead of HVLC or some God-based program because you think that's the best way to get to your job? Or are you trusting that God can take you where you're supposed to go? I think the reality is we try to manipulate and control where we think we should go. But I'll tell you this, Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but ooh, its way leads to death. So are you forcing it or are you allowing God in? And the moment that we let him in is when he takes over because again, his ways are higher He wants to fulfill that desire in you. The job he has for you, the relationship he has for you, all the things that he has for you, they're gonna be so much more fulfilled than what we try to figure out on our own. Are you forcing it or are you letting God in? Point number one, let Jesus help you design it. Are you forcing it? Point number three is this, let Jesus help you finish it. Someone turn to your neighbor and say, let Jesus help you finish it. I know, I'm that guy that makes you talk. Don't hate me. The Bible says that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Finisher. You ever finished, not finished something you started? Let's be honest, guys. Come on, it's church. We have to. It's like a rule. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Finally, finally. I think the game of Monopoly was created to not be finished. <clears throat> that's, just, that's just my estimation. I can't tell you how many times that board has flipped over in my home, not, not because of me, because of everyone else. <clears throat> or I've walked out of the room. I don't, the, the game just doesn't seem, it's way too long. It's always way too long. It's like four hours. Like, let's cut it down an hour. I heard they have this new one where it's like cards. You play with cards. That might be the way to go right? That's probably the way to go. Anyways, just throwing that out there in case you want to play games tonight with your family. It's hard to finish things. I remember this last summer, last year, I told Leilani, I said, Leilani, I want to do something new in our relationship. Let's try something new to to shake things up and just do something fun. So I said, you want to go buy a puzzle? We could do a puzzle together. So she goes out and I'm expecting her to buy like a 25 piece puzzle or (laughs) maybe like a 50 piece puzzle, you know, just kind of get, get our feet wet and just kind of get things going, you know. She comes back with like a thousand piece puzzle and I'm like, babe, do you want us to succeed? Like, come on, like we got us. And here's the deal, we're leaving like the next day. So we, I'm like, well, we, we bought it, we paid for it, we gotta do it. So we, we go to our um, in-laws house and we're there, we're hanging out and, and we pour out all the pieces. I'm kidding, I'm not kidding, it's like a mound of just a thousand piece puzzle on the, and I'm just like, oh, dear Lord, this is going to take forever. So we start working on it. Well, we're working on it, and her, her dad walks in while we're working on it. He's like, wow, that's a, that's a huge puzzle. Like, that's a massive puzzle. I'm like, I know. That I told Elani to get a puzzle, and was, she got us like a thousand-piece puzzle. And, and he's like, yeah, it's a huge puzzle. And he's like, Do you, I don't think you can finish that before you leave. And I was like, Okay. 
Now, I don't know if you know me at all. Maybe you don't. But that lit a fire under my belly <laughs> that only God could quench. So you know exactly what I spent my entire time doing the, the rest of the week. Puzzle. Puzzle, 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 all day long. Puzzle. And by the grace of God, your boy finished a puzzle one day earlier than before we left. Come on, give God a shout of praise. I'll see you guys later. What was funny is, as I was walking around throughout the house, there'd be times I'd notice um, Leilani's mom, my mother-in-law, walking through and like working on little pieces here and there. So she'd be like filling in the pieces and I'd walk back and show up and there'd be like this square, this square done. And I'd be like, yes, that helps me out so much. That saves me like 30 minutes. And then I'd come back again and there'd be a little square here, a little square there. One night I actually woke up to get Leilani a glass of water and I see her, she has a flashlight. The flashlight's turned on, it's like 12 a.m. And she's in there and she's like, I don't know if it's to help me. I think it is. And she's just like working on it. But I was able to finish the job. And the crazy thing was, even though that I didn't see my mom was working on the puzzle, I knew that she was helping me complete the job. Even though I wasn't there, I knew she was there helping me out. Can I tell you that in your life, the things that you're going through, there is a helper. In fact, the Holy Spirit, that's one of his names. He's the advocate. He's a helper. He's there to help you. Why? To do what? To finish the job. He wants to help you, whatever your situation is, to finish the job. The Holy Spirit, he's like your mother-in-law. Some of you are like, what? <laughs> it's not like my mother-in-law. No, 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 no. No, there's no way. There's no way. He's there working, even though you don't see him. He's doing things on your behalf. What did we sing that song? Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Because he's the way maker. He's always working. He's always moving. He's always helping us to complete the job. But sometimes we forget that God can actually do it. We forget that God can step in late in the midnight hour and turn things around. Can I tell you, I believe I came here today with one simple message, to put hope in your heart to say this, God's not done. He can help you finish the job. You've been struggling with your addiction. It's been there far too long. God can help you find freedom. It's not too late. He can help you finish the job. He's got some puzzle pieces in his hand and he can help you. Maybe for you, it's with your finances, you're not sure how you're gonna make it. God can help you finish the job. See that word finisher there in, in the Greek, what it means is to complete, but complete without blemish. So complete with perfection. When we moved into our house, right before we moved in, they gave us this piece of tape here. And they said, we want you to take this tape and we want you to cut off a piece and put it anywhere where it's not finished, where it needs to be completed. And so what I would do is I would... I would grab it, take off a piece, rip it off, take it near the baseboard. Okay, they need to come finish that up. It's not my job, it's their job. They're like, okay, awesome. I take this piece and I go to where the power outlet was because when it closed, it was, the door was right in front of the power outlet so they needed to move it over. That's a very specific example. But yeah, you need to take that tape, you need to put that right there. Take a piece of tape, put it in the garage where they didn't finish up the paint. I don't have the paint, I don't have the exact paint color that they have, so I, I need them to do it. I can't do it on my own strength. I can't do it by myself, so I have to take this, and I have to mark it, because that's not my job. I, I need someone else to step in to do it, and so I, I mark it. And all throughout the house, as many spots as we could possibly find, we tear off a piece of tape, and we would begin to mark it. Can I tell you, in your life, the areas of your struggle, there's some moments in life where you need to tear off a piece of tape and begin to mark the things that you're experiencing and saying, you know what, God? I need you to step in and finish the job. Maybe for you, you need to take a piece of tape and you need to rip it off and open up your mobile banking app and say, God, I need you to step in right here and begin to pray and begin to mark it with your prayer. God, I thank you that you're gonna take care of this situation. I don't need to worry about it because you've got it. 
It's not my job to finish it. It's your job. If you told me to tithe, you can take care of me. So I trust God that you'll do it. Maybe you need to rip off a piece of tape and go straight to your child who's been acting a little bit crazy lately and stick a couple pieces on their forehead. (laughs) Say, by the blood of Jesus, I know the word says that I will raise a child in the way they should go. They will not depart from it. God, I thank you that you're going to send somebody into their life to minister to them. God, I thank you that you're going to begin to speak to them while in their dreams. You're going to begin to speak to them by their friends. God, you're going to use other people to speak to them. We're going to mark it. Mark the things of God. Maybe for you, you need to mark Take another piece and rip it off and begin to mark your heart. Because you've been dealing with unforgiveness towards that person that hurt you. And you've done all the Christian things you should do. You go to church, you tithe, you do all the things. But you're neglecting the, the scripture that says if You have unforgiveness towards someone. Put down your sacrifice. Stop worshiping and go forgive. What do you need to mark? Let Jesus help you finish it. 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 it. He can. He wants to. He wants to step into your situation. I love the scripture that says, when I am weak, he's strong. When I'm weak, that's when he does his best work. So you're weak, good, good news. You're at the best place you can possibly be. Because it's in our weakness that he becomes strong. Zechariah 4, 6, it's not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of the hosts. It's by his spirit, it's not by your strength. And if you keep doing the things that you've always done, you'll never see change. To see things you've never seen before, you gotta do things you've never done before. It's time to mark it. It's time to mark it. It's time to look at different things in your life, the things that are mountains, or maybe they're molehills, and say, God, I need you to step into this situation because here's the deal. God wants to do it today. His plan for you is greater than you know. His plan for you, listen to me today. His plan for you is greater than you know. He has a purpose for your life, but so often we miss out on the blessings of God. There's some people in here today, you're missing out on the blessings of God. Why? Because you're doing things that you want to do rather than doing what he says you should do. And if you would just do what he says you would do, you would find all the sushi. You would find all the good things. You would be in the will of God. And I'm telling you, being in the will of God doesn't mean we're not going to experience problems, but there's a peace. There's a knowing in my heart that I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm not farther along. I'm not further behind. I may not be where I want to be, but praise God, I'm where I'm at now, which is in your will, Father. Can you hear me, church? Let him into your heart. We're so prideful, we're so arrogant. We think we know everything. I know nothing. We know nothing. We know just a small portion of life. He knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows everything. He's alpha and omega. He understands it all. What is wisdom? It's wisdom, it says this, is the, is the beginning of fearing the Lord. That's where it starts. And do you fear the Lord enough to trust him? 